There's going to be a very special program on 1011 Strong. It's called the Rosemary Clooney story. And look who we have with us today, Rosemary <laughs> Clooney, in her very own personal purple self, <laughs> Sandra so. Locke, in a little uh, subdivision of her. <laughs> <laughs> this little tiny person here. You know, when you see this, when you see this, it's going to shock you. It's good, the story's going to shock you because you don't know how far this lady got down. I didn't know that. I hadn't read your book, This for Remembrance. And I knew that, you know, you were kind of out of the picture for a while. But I didn't know that she was at the, the bottom of the barrel. I didn't know you were an alcoholic and that you Not were an alcoholic, pills, no, no. On, on pills, certainly. But if I had been an alcoholic, I could have bought the farm, you know. I mean, because, in addition? In addition, because it was really, yeah because that's the time when people get in big trouble if mm -hmm. they mix alcohol and pills. I was just into downers, nice sleeping things like Nembutol, Phenobarbital, Chewanol. Well, at what point did you finally decide, I'm gonna do something about this, I, I can't take it anymore? Oh, I, I had a breakdown. I didn't decide. It was decided for me, I was hospitalized. Mm. All right, then at what point did you decide I'm gonna write this? Because a lot of people would try to cover this up. Yeah. You well, tell the whole world, you know, look at me, folks. Oh, well, I, I, I got out of the hospital in a matter of three weeks, and uh, the doctor, who was a very good doctor, for me, that's so personal that, it, you know, that you can't really do a blanket thing, but uh, he was a good doctor for me, and he uh, said that uh, probably, possibly, this trauma would never happen again, that it's a an acute situation. But if I wanted to be sure, it probably would be a good thing to go into therapy. And I did. Very intensive therapy for a while. Got less and less. I'm glad. I'm glad you did. And, and this young lady has been selected to tell her story. Sandra Locke, you see her in the Clint Eastwood films. I think that's where you <coughs> recognize her most of all. Why were you selected? Uh, well, it was Rosemary's idea. And um, she had seen my work. We hadn't actually met, but had a mutual friend. And uh, she, she had a script sent over through him. And uh, I read it, and I, I was very flattered that she thought of me and wanted me to do it. And uh, so we got together on it. So you talked a lot together as it was progressing. Did you give her, give her some advice? As to Not as it was progressing. Oh, really? We, we talked a lot before, before it started. We spent some time together, as, uh, as much time, because Rosemary has a, she's singing now, too, so she's traveling a lot. And we, we worked it in between and, and had a chance to spend some time together. And mm -hmm. Now, all of your songs are dubbed in. No, I, I pre-recorded everything. Yeah. Yes. And so you have to lip sync everything. Right. Isn't that hard to do? Yes. <laughs> very hard, it because you've got to get her phrasing. She's wonderful at it. She yes. really is. But you sing. Have yes, heard you sing but I don't sing like Rosemary you know, Clooney, you can tell. Yeah, when we first saw it and you came on, I said, ooh, either, I know why she was selected, because she sings just like Rosemary Clooney. Yeah. It's like, no, that's Rosemary. That's, that is the real said, Rosemary. Wait a minute, wait a minute now, they got to do all of that dubbing, all the phrasing. Did you watch any of her old stuff? Some uh, tapes? Yes, I did. I watched some, some tapes uh, of Rosemary and, uh, and some of her films, of course, and... Um, just listened constantly, all day long, to the, the pre-recorded songs, which we were using in the film. I mean, I had them in my car. I had them everywhere I was. Yeah. I played them over and over and over until they, they finally just sort of, uh, I just well, fell what into the it. the mannerisms? Where did you get those? Isn't it amazing how she yeah. does it? Because I, I was not aware of, of you even doing anything. I swear, it's like the conversation we had earlier today. It happened by osmosis. I don't. Mm -hmm. I'd some of the, uh, very few, like during the performances, the, the singing performances, uh, that a few of the, the, the movements were co conscious on my part of having studied the tapes of Rosemary singing. But uh, for the most part, I think it, it, it really was just a matter of absorbing my mind with Rosemary. And, it, and by way of osmosis, uh, I guess it, it came across that way. I mean, I'm very happy that she feels it did anyway. You had to smoke in the film, didn't you? I remember a scene with you and your little sister. Well, oh, there is oh, one brief okay, moment. Because okay. <laughs> see, she and I are serious smokers, okay? And you're, you're pure. You're one of the purest. <laughs> okay, well, well, what did you do when you had to smoke? I mean, well, it was in, in, the, in the film, it was intended to, to appear as if we're, we're, tr we're, tr we're children playing grown up and we don't know how to so smoke. So you don't so. have to inhale. No, no, no. no. It, was, it was just a nice little kids play moment. It was a good touch. It was a good touch. 
Yeah. Uh, you know the song, come on in my house? I know, see, I wanted always to be a singer. Really? I'm so terrible. They say, don't Give sing. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up. They're right. Peaches They're right. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Okay. Hey, don't do it. Won't do it Please don't do it. it. No. You didn't want to do it. William Saroyan <laughs> doesn't want you to do it. Ross Your mother doesn't, doesn't want you to do it. Your father doesn't. Want you to do it. <laughs> well, you didn't want to do it either. That's true. You didn't want to do that song. No. It's a weird song. Isn't yes. It? It's nine bar phrases, which is strange. Nine bar. Yes. As opposed to a six eight bar. bar. Oh, eight bar. Eight bar, but six is all right. You know, but nine bar is an odd. Odd number, as you probably know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I went to those one yes. night. Ah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my! But that was that your most successful song? No. Oh. Hey there in this old house, probably. They were back to back, so they sold about three million. Oh my goodness gracious! And that's three million when the records yeah, were when not records uh, didn't sell, didn't much, sell yeah. the way they do today. I mean, oh. it's not well, the market was not what it is. Speaking of that, when you were recording in the days of Mitch Miller and the yes. big orchestras and so forth, now you know what's happening with recording. The, you know the 24 tracks and stuff? Yeah. yeah. How, how do you feel about that? I mean, getting rid of the orchestra and just I using find the it, Luke synthesizers I find it really, I find it really hard because I, find, I found recording uh, uh, with a live orchestra, I would get more inspiration from hearing that time after time, and it would be slightly different each time. So you'd be kicked into different phrasing. I still do a lot of jazz recording, and that's the way I have to record with them. I have to do it. Even though we have the equipment to send them away, you know, for a while. I don't want to do that. I just I want to be in the, in the, in the room with them and, and listen to what they're doing. You know, I have a theory that they started doing that because so many um, performers came, came along who couldn't really sing or perform and then they started doing a lot of tricky things technically mm -hmm. with uh, a lot of overdubbing and a lot of and then, mm. then they could redo uh, certain sections and then splice it all together and then then you've got a record in the yeah. end and it's amazing though how many you know how many people stay in in studios for months to do an album and we were uh, we would we could do four sides in three hours <laughs> in the 50s yeah well speaking of that do you think a musician a song a vocalist is born with that voice, or can you develop it? I think you develop it to, to a certain degree. I don't think there's a style that you start out with. I think you start copying somebody that you like a little bit. And then once you hear yourself, you discard what you don't like and take what you like and, and, uh, and work on it. All right, but you and your sister both right. sang. You sang as a duo when yeah. you began. All right, it came to the point where she says, hey, you've got the voice. Now you get the same genes. You came from the same mommy and daddy. And very, very uh, similar sounding voices. I had a wider range. Uh, it was a better voice. So is that born? Is that inherited? I don't know. I don't know. I think I don't know. so. Well, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer that that uh, any artistic ability cannot be taught, cannot be learned, cannot be. It can be developed. Yeah, I, th I see. And what it you can mean, yeah. be uh, sure. trained and and all those mm -hmm. things. But I think there's something really with the, with with the with the great ones that I mean it has to be that that uh, natural thing that there has to be that that inborn uh, gift mm -hmm. well we're going to see a real powerful story coming up and thank you for your courage your honesty that's a hard story to tell to thank lay you. it all out there and you did a brilliant job didn't she thank you Sounded <laughs> a nice job thank thank you. About Rosemary Queen. let's give her a great big <laughs> hand thank yeah. you so much and we'll be back <laughs> at 10 11 morning continues <laughs>